Do you feel upset, depressed, angry, anxious, or feel like your voice doesn't even really matter, or you have no control? These are questions that are more common than you may think, because mental health is so important. And why May is Mental Health Awareness Month, a time of year where we all face the mental health struggles that we and our loved ones and people we know may face. As days go by and years go by, we need to acknowledge and keep the forefront of mental health in our mindsets and the importance of how we need to acknowledge it, accept it as a reality, and need to work together to help each other. For more information, please see the links in the description below. Your voice, your emotions, and your struggles matter, and it's okay to not be okay. A boy is lost in the winter wilderness and comes across a friendly talking mole. The boy simply wants to find a home and the mole offers to help him on his journey. Along the way, they run into a hungry fox and finally they come across an outcasted white horse. Together they go on a journey to find a home for each other. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse is a story that teaches not just young children but everyone about how we are affected by how we're perceived by others and eventually trying to figure out who we are. And it raises the question, what does it mean to accept differences? At the beginning of the story, just like the audience, the young boy is lost, appearing in the winter wilderness, scared, afraid, and alone eventually coming across another scared and alone creature, the mole. The mole, although having no real relationship, not knowing this boy, not even recognizing him, and knowing that they're different species, is willing to help this boy because he too is also lost, and in helping him is helping himself, which becomes a reoccurring theme throughout the film. Along this same journey, they come across a hungry fox. Now, foxes are notoriously known for being tricky, for being conniving and manipulative. But this fox is simply just hungry, although hesitant, and not understanding why these two creatures, so different from one another, would even interact with each other, let alone go on the same journey as one another, eventually decides to join them. It could be for selfishness, survival, or loneliness, like the other two. But eventually the fox does join them on their journey. Finally, they come across a beautiful, majestic, and regal white horse, and are shocked that this horse was outcasted by the other horses. Just like each of them, he doesn't have a place to call home. His home was stripped away from him for being not similar to the others. And they realize that each of these four species are so vastly different, and yet all share the same common trait. The fear of being alone, of isolation, of having nowhere to go. And so they collectively share that grief and continue on their journey. As the journey continues, the boy starts to doubt himself, focusing on the negatives of himself and 
all of the problems that he sees within himself, being weak, being scared and upset and sad and angry with himself and wishing he was stronger and hearing the plight of the boy, the mole, fox and horse hear their own faults, hear their own self doubts, hear their own problems and say things of encouragement to the boy, things that they wish they could hear in reciprocation, things that allow them to move forward. And they do not hide from the faults in which they each have. And through their acknowledgement of their faults, they're able to accept themselves for them. And unafraid of his own shunning and unacceptance, the horse finally reveals why he was outcasted. Because he was not a horse, he was a pegasus. And the entire group accepts his beauty as not faults, but as loving parts of someone they care about. Near the end of the journey, they come to a town, a town that the boy can call home, where he can have a family, where he can be warm and not afraid, a place where he is loved and accepted. But as the boy, he realizes this isn't what true acceptance is. He doesn't need to find a home and love because he already found it with the mole, the fox, and the horse. And so the horse, along with the fox and mole, together accept the boy and accept their home is together with one another. So, what does it mean to accept differences? I think if you look at each of the individual characters, you could see the faults in each of them. You could see each individual character as a representation of a mental health disorder. Or you could just simply see them as four characters or four creatures. Regardless of that, they each have their own insecurities and faults. And with those insecurities and faults, it is a part of who they are. Just like our faults that we deal with, our differences, our inconsistencies, the things that make us different from one another. You could have a scar or you could have a voice that doesn't sound like what you look like. But the fact remains, your faults, your defects, your differences, your quirks, whatever you want to call it, they're a part of who you are. And so in order for you to truly be accepted, the differences need to be accepted with it. And in that same way, the differences and faults in which we each individually carry and express and have can have a positive or negative impact on our lives. But in order to truly care about an individual, those differences aren't just quirks. They're a part of who they are. And they need to be accepted in order for you to truly, truly care for that person. But in the end, these aren't answers. They're hypotheticals. As of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. What are you talking about? You heard me rapping, right? <laughs>